living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. The poor and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own game. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, keep us sedated. You are listening to Toward Anarchy on the Republic Broadcasting Network. Here's your host, Michael Storm. Oh, I can already tell I'm going to be so glad to have this, this back on this system. It, it, that makes me very, very happy. I've enjoyed having the video the last couple of weeks. I, it's fun. The video is fun, but it's also kind of boring at the same time because I'm not really doing anything. I'm just sitting here looking at these screens with my information on them or the or the person that I'm talking to. I, I have my website up. I have the, the studio up so that Ken and I are in contact during the show. It's it's not that interesting to watch me on video. I'm 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 tied to my chair because my headset is is uh, wired. I don't use a, a wireless headset. That's not it's not a good idea to use wireless stuff when you're involved in something like this batteries run out connections die it's bad enough with the with the cables just that you know this technology stuff can be so funny sometimes it can tweak with you thanks for joining me i really appreciate you you hanging out it's toward anarchy i'm michael storm go to toward anarchy.com if you want to follow along I'll, I'll tell you about that in just a minute but i want to i want i want to throw some love out to the network and ken their producer ken who always manages to show every week and uh, John, who runs the network, and, and they're they're kind of a given. There's some other people that need some love too, though, and it's you guys, the listeners. And and I I'm I've I, I see you. You're out there. It's and and unfortunately, I've been um, ignoring some of my my places where I where I put out the the anarchy the the toward anarchy archive uh, the the show. Afterward, not just the live show. If you're listening to me live, that's a little bit different. But there are all these people that listen to the the show in places like YouTube, and specifically YouTube, because I've been shooting the video the last couple of weeks. And and so as I was posting video this week from last week, I got to looking at some of the numbers and was amazed to see that just it, it, we haven't been on YouTube very long. And I, uh, I, I'm admitting right now as I'm talking that I'm negle- I've been neglecting it. And I, I haven't put every show up there because there isn't a video to go with every show. And it's not particularly interesting necessarily. Uh, but that, that's not to say that people aren't listening to just the audio presentation across the YouTube. And, and so I got to looking at it. And not only are they listening, but they're like, they're like listening to the whole show and they're they're listening to multiple shows. So I'm I'm looking at those numbers for the first time and I'm going, well, I, I need to pay more attention, give more love uh, to my YouTube peeps for uh, there. There's only a few of you, but you're strong. You're mighty. I'm, I'm pushing right now to try to get to the the 100 subscriber mark. So uh, be sure to when I hit 100 subscribers, the big thing that I get to do is I get to claim the. Uh, toward anarchy name it'll be youtube.com slash toward anarchy or whatever their their configuration of names is it's usually just something like that and that that's kind of a big deal and so i need to hurry up and get to that uh 100 mark 100 subscriber mark so that i can do that and about 20 subscribers away or something so i've been making it a point to post some more of the content of the shows that haven't been up there. I, I just posted um, the the show that we had with James Dunavant, uh, the, uh, the executive director of the uh, Free Market Medical Association. And and so I was able to post that. That's new up there on the YouTube. That was really cool. And then this will make it up there on the YouTube. My, my guest today, Chuck Lee, he'll be joining us here in just about 25 minutes. Uh, he, he's a new friend. He's one of these great conversations that I like to have, not just because we're going to talk about technology and security uh, and, and things like that, which I'm very interested in, of course. 
but also because he's he's a new friend and so it's a a risk you know it's a i never talked to the guy before and to bring him on into the live situation but he seems eager and ready and he has something to talk about and and that's all it really takes it's i, I you know i've pushed that idea to everybody everybody's doing it now since covid came along the number of podcasts the number of uh, people broadcasting some kind of show in one way or another has has dramatically increased and everybody's competing for uh an audience out there and so it's it's real great to have one <laughs> it's it, it's real great to have a home like the network uh it, it's it's just all real great and so i share it with you and i bring you uh the opportunity to talk to new and different and, and it, it, people that you might never hear from necessarily Chuck is going to be a fun, great conversation. And because of this this idea that he's a, a new friend, it's something that I've mentioned a little bit before, just kind of in passing, and something that's been churning around in the back of my mind for a while. And we'll see where my mind takes me through this one. But it, it's landed me in this place where I'm thinking, uh, realizing, understanding that there's all of these these thousands of people that I I know in the social media and around the world, but I really don't know them because I'm not a stalker. So I don't really stalk them to find out who they are or, or what they look like, if they have families, anything like that. So I don't know if, if somebody's black or white or male or female, I only have their name and, and really whatever that little image that's next to their name happens to be. That's all I really have to go by of these people until I have some sort of conversation with them, either by text or uh, not even just in the social media itself. Thank you, poor white country boy. I appreciate it. You, you, my brother, um, <laughs> somebody just said, it's great. This is, it's real time. Uh, somebody just signed up and, and became a subscriber on, on YouTube. That's just really cool. Uh, no, so there's the, I, the all these people, that's a poor white country boy. I'm going to guess male, white, um, possibly in the South, maybe Midwest. It, it, who knows? Uh, it could, it, it, you, you never know. They could actually it could be in New York. He could be listening to in New York <laughs> and, and still believe of himself as a, a, a poor white country boy. I don't know how you could be living in New York and be poor, for one. Uh, <laughs> some of those other things may not fit New York either in a lot of places. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's just I, I don't I don't know these people. And, 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 and even in our uh, exchanges across the social media, I might not there not might be any clue about who that individual is. They, they, of course, the things they believe in because they're responding to the things that I've posted, the things that I'm saying, which are usually mostly my words and things about conversations every once in a while, a meme or, or a link to some of the articles, things that I tend to share just like I do with this show. And, and so I'll get an idea of, of who they might be morally, um, uh, socially, like that, but that still doesn't tell me whether they're male or female or black or white or or straight or gay or purple penguin or whatever. I don't know, uh, and, and it doesn't matter to me. And it, and it happened this week that there was a conversation, a number of conversations, as there is, and and it, it, what happens on the social media is if you're having a conversation with someone, you say you exchange a number of times with them. If, you, if you're following them, they'll start to show up more in your feed, if you groom your feeds real well. And I do. And, and so they'll start to show up in your feed, and they'll start to show up immediately. Uh, and and this happened this week. And so as I'm following this person that I had had some contact with, I'm watching their other conversations, and they happen to mention that they're a black man. Now, well, okay. Well, there there you go. Once again, I, I did not know that there was nothing about who you are, who you represent yourself online as that made me suspect that you were any anything in particular, but a moral individual 
a man in this case because the name was John. <laughs> so it was kind of straightforward. It was, it was probably a guy, most likely. It could be, could be a disguise. Uh, I don't know why. The, the, it, it was just neat, though, the way it came across to me. And and fit in with this idea that I'd had in my head that I just really don't know who these people are, that I I, I get along with them, I like with them, I converse them because of what they believe. You know, what the the who they say they actually are, as opposed to my visual impression of them based on the color of their skin or what I think may be their sex or what I may think to be their gender orientation or whether I think they dress terribly and I happen to have a little bit of taste and and I'm not gay and that may be weird to some people. <laughs> so, I, I will I will note such things. And, and and I'll make as anyone does. You take input and information into your systems in the brain, and you process it, and you you make you make judgments, you make calls. Maybe not derogatory a person. That's not what I'm trying to suggest when you talk about you know, labeling people or categorizing them in your own mind. That there's some negative connotation associated with that idea but there shouldn't be there's there's no reason that there is it's just information and you use information to 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 navigate the universe that you live in uh so in the end this will all come together as it always does and there'll be a guest on the show and he is a uh, a former gang member 20 years in gangs in la la street gangs uh, or he's a very weak attempt by the establishment or some uh, other manipulator or something like that to make me think he is and get on the show for some reason. I, I don't know what the means to what the end would be to that. There, I, it, it's funny because I have a, a lot of friends again and uh, well, Tracy was talking to me about it. Tracy's a good friend and a fan of the show and, uh, and, and, just before the show today, we're talking a little bit about it's a big deal right now. Everybody's sort of worried because Facebook in general has a new policy coming out, I guess, October 1st, where they're making it more clear that the way people respond socially is going to affect your pages and your 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 standing within Facebook and within the Facebook community. So if you post something and it gets likes that's a good thing but if it actually gets the the sad faces or the crying faces the angry faces things like that it, it will actually count negatively before it was just a, a a way to give an impression of how that person felt about the content not that they not that it it, it probably has been all along but now they're they're making it a, a point to suggest that they will use it to block people out of their pages out of their business pages out of their personal pages so if i or anybody else on the network as somebody i i personally have been invited to to hang out on the republic broadcasting network social media page and there's there's thousands and thousands of people there's followers thousands and thousands of likes and followers uh, on that page and any one of them could potentially at any time click one of the they do they do it all the time whether they it's it, it, because you're trying to express your real emotion. Uh, that's the way I use it. If that, uh, if that headline, that topic, that image, whatever it is, makes me sad, that's my impression of it. I'm not. I, it's not suggesting that I think that the content should be altered. That, but that's the way that they're going to use it, and they're going to use it and. It, it, ultimately negatively it's it's this it's i've talked about it on the show before i i brought example of of life scores and talked about it a little bit if we jump back through the archive into last year some of the stuff i was talking about it's all technology related it'll be like what chuck and and i are talking about here coming up in just about 15 minutes uh, uh it, it, again it's all interconnected uh, they're they're worried that Facebook is going to use this now to shut people down. It's it's this 
it's this social score thing is, is what they're going to use it for based on what they're saying. And so a lot of people are going to go down because a lot of people aren't 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 taking my words seriously and and understanding that one we have to be where the battleground is it's, it, that's why it was a big deal that's why there was a big stink raised when when a, a large number of the right wing influencers were tossed off of social media because that's where the battleground is it's an information war that's where people are exchanging information that's where the information warriors need to be so they have to find back doors and ways and we have to make sure that everybody does the like and share and follow and subscribe all of those things as you guys are doing. Thank you. Uh, and keep doing it and make sure to keep doing it because they're, they're finding ways to twist everybody out of their platforms and people are running the Mayway and, and mines and, and float and all these other places. And I haven't done this yet and I won't, I'll stay at Facebook. I, I mean, I will join these things. It is, it is the way uh, it must be done. Oh yes. It's coming back. Second season announced. Um, I, the day it's a great show. If you haven't seen the Mandalorian yet, if you're, if you're like one of those anti Disney people, don't do that to yourself because they made a great television show for Star Wars, finally. And and it's different. It's new characters. Um, sorry, there's my pitch. Uh, they just announced this week that there was a, a second, that the second season, the, the second season start date, which I didn't go look. I just know everybody was happy about it. I, I will watch it. It'll happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, this idea that they'll be able to use the social scores and, and shut people out and cut people off, it, it, that's where the battleground is. I'll stay there until... Facebook is dead until there's no more people there to talk to. And, and, and I'll go to, to some of these other places as well. I've, I've reached, I, I've created a Patreon account and I'm trying to figure out how to use that to help it to maybe monetize this show a little bit and just um, do the, the bare minimum, pay for the website and, and things like that. So it doesn't have to come out of my, my own pocketbook. Um, I don't have to sell any more collectibles to support it. <laughs> Nothing out of my collection anymore. Uh, go to TowardAnarchy.com. September 6th is what you're looking for if you have to jump into the archive. I meet a new friend today, and we have one of my favorite conversations, uh, Chuck Lee, and I will talk about technology and security and technology specifically. And then he's been building and selling computers for years. And we'll also, if we get, if we get into it, we'll talk about uh, off-grid solar he has some real experience with that. Also, there's a, a link that I share that I'll talk to, to you about here. Uh, but I wanted to mention some things that are coming up. Chris Hall is the former LA gang member that I was talking about. He's going to be on the show. I, we haven't secured a date. And I believe next weekend, Dr. Keith Smith from the Surgery Center of Oklahoma will be on the show. We haven't confirmed yet, but uh, we penciled it in as the phrase goes. And uh, I imagine I'll hear back from him before the weekend is out. And we'll know for sure. But that that's the plan anyway, is next weekend, Dr. K, uh, Keith Smith. And the Surgery Center of Oklahoma is one of these these free market medical uh, groups when they are out there and they're open about their pricing and they and you can shop them and and they'll work with you and they take different forms of of payments other than just insurance and uh they, you know there's just we had a little bit of the conversation with uh, with James Donovan and and hopefully we'll be able to do that again as well but we'll 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 touch on that subject again because it's really seriously super important that idea that we have a free market and that we have a free market in healthcare it's so key to individual liberty and to being able to care for yourself is it's very very important uh, as I was saying, there's some links. Uh, if you go to September 6th, of course, as always, I shared the, the links for uh, Chuck Lee's websites. And we'll talk about those when Chuck joins us in about eh, about 10 minutes. And then uh, there's this link. It's crazy. Crazy lady writes a book attempting to justify uh, the theft and destruction of private property. And it's a top selling new release on Amazon. But this lady is so left wing. Uh, nutball cray cray that npr actually had to come out and apologize for giving her airtime so that's how uh, her notions are we will come back and uh, talk about a couple more links we'll talk about the quote right there at toward anarchy.com when we get back bring him in and we will have this uh, 
one of my favorite conversations is a tech chat, uh, particularly in reference to security. I'm, I'm really eager to find out. I mean, I already know a little bit because I, I do a little bit of research, not a lot. And, and there's a reason for that that's exposed itself again, uh, this idea that I've built my reality, the things that you hear me saying, the things that I write, the things that I talk about are original to my own thoughts, my own head, um, because – where is it? Okay, let me grab my phone. This happened, this happened yesterday. I had no idea who this guy is, but I had to pull it up because I have to tell you because I don't even remember his name now. And it's just, it's, it, it was a big deal. And that's why it was surprising. Okay. So, uh, David Graeber, J, uh, G R A E B E R, scholar, anarchist, and intellectual leader of Occupy Wall Street, dies at 59. Now, no disrespect to him, but. I had no idea who he was, and I was down on the the ground at Wall Street, uh, Occupy Wall Street in Denver, one of the bigger places that it was happening in America, and it, I didn't know who he was, and that that's just me not being a follower. I do, I'm not. I just I base my world, my understanding of it on my reality, not somebody else's opinion of it, and so I've never read any of his books, but there was a. This nice little write-up on the guy, of course. People always speak nicely of, of people after they're dead. It's, a, it's an amazing thing the way that happens. But uh, <laughs> I, it, that seemed like you know, it was a, 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 he, he was pretty spot on in his thinking just based on the, the uh, again, the, uh, the opinion of somebody else. You know, just me reading this small piece on him trying to understand who he was a little bit and figure that out. And um, uh, it was just a, a, another one of these weird testaments to my own reality. And it, I think it's great because it it tells me that I'm just living my life and I'm not trying to m make a pattern or make an impression or follow a, a pattern or somebody else's impression that I'm just – I'm just actually, and I always have been, and I always felt like I was, and I always said I would. You know, that's why I say that I haven't changed from when I was a child. That I'm, I'm just who I was. As a, it, certainly by my late teens, I had developed this idea of who. I, there's some some subtlety, some things that needed some adjustment along the way. But it, generally speaking, who I was and how I would look at the rest of my world, I've been that way uh, uh, all of my life, and. I, I was that way because I was living my life minute to minute, day by day, and experiencing it, loving it, cherishing it for what it is at the time. And I don't think a lot of people necessarily live that way. And I think that's why I I talk about a jealousy, living a life that makes other people jealous, you know, that sort of thing. It's not even on purpose. It's just how I think I have to live. It's, I'm, I'm just trying to do me. That's it. That's all I'm trying to do. It's, it's a real simple thing. But so I'll take the chance. I'll, I'll meet somebody and introduce them to you at the same time that I do. And that's what we'll do with Chuck Lee here in just a few minutes. There's another link there on the page, as always, that I share with you. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department has a very serious gang problem, armed, murderous, thieving thugs running the streets, and they wear badges. Uh, this is a great story. This particular version of it's out of New York Magazine. Uh, it, read it. It's talking about the the sheriff's in Los Angeles, one of the just a, a terrible, horrible, um, wow, <laughs> just they they have gangs within their big gang. Uh, they there's a thing called chasing ink. I don't know if it was in this article that they mentioned something about that, but there's somebody that it was a big whistleblower here not so long ago uh, that was talking about this this notion of chasing ink and what it is is gang tattoos for cops it's cops getting a kill and they get their their tattoo that's what it is and so they're actually policing the street with the notion of getting their kill tattoo that's just one of these things uh, and and it's amazing that 
it, that these things are coming to a greater light after all this time, knowing these things myself for years and telling people stuff like this, ha- hearing it from cops themselves and talking about just the, the corruption, but really just trying to not make it about the individuals and trying to make it about the job. So I, do, I don't point that finger and get that negative response back in that sense. Well, there you go. They're a gang. Police are a gang. My guest Chuck Lee is going to join us as soon as we get right back. We'll talk tech right here on Toward Anarchy. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. I'm kind of from Michigan in a roundabout way. My mother was born in Michigan. My my grandparents lived there. That's where they had, I believe, all of all of my aunts and uncles, as well as my mother, I believe they were all born there. So uh, connected there. Good to have you along, brother. Uh, TowardAnarchy.com. Click on uh, the September 6th. That's the date you're looking for. If it's not right there on the front page, if you can't see that it says September 6th right there on the front page, if you don't see October 30th right underneath that from my conversation last week with Bradley Thomas, who's going to be a regular guest, and he and I are going to collaborate on a few things and you'll see some amazing wonderful things coming from us and if, if you don't see the doctor dr keith from the uh dr keith smith from the surgery center of oklahoma will be joining us as well as chris hall all these things coming up and you might just have to go into the archive that's easy just click on the archive button you're looking for september 2020 it's september 6th and you'll see that i'm meeting a new friend today so you get to meet him as well as, and we're going to have one of my favorite conversations. Chuck Lee uh, joins me now to talk about technology and security. Uh, a couple of my favorite conversations. He's been building and selling computers, custom computers for years with an emphasis on security and protecting people's privacy as well as uh, their data. And uh, and we'll get into all these details uh, about uh, his business. And as always, the links are there. It's called Skunkerific. Uh, and there's a link to the Facebook page. You can follow along on the social media. And then there's also a link to the website where you can uh, contact them about different services and everything that they have uh, that Chuck has available. And Chuck, man, it's it's good to talk to you. Thanks for taking uh, a little bit of uh, time on a beautiful Sunday. It is here in, in the middle of America in Topeka, Kansas. It's hot and, and sunny, but it's just another beautiful day in America. And I, I appreciate you some, taking some time to join me and get to know me and uh, introduce yourself to my, my listener. Hi, it's great to be here. Um, it's overcast and everything else in southwest Ohio. So uh, mm-hmm. that is... Um, that is our today here. Well, you know what? At least you have a day. That's the way that I look at it. It's, uh, you know, even when it's raining and when it's overcast and things like that, I still say that it's a beautiful day because any day above ground for me is, is really a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to introduce myself, I'm, um, I've am i been in the computer industry since I was seven years old. My mother was the nation's top seller of the Suite of Cash Register, if you remember that. And she came to me when I was seven years old and said, uh, I really hate this part of my job, uh, which was programming these things. Uh, they had to have all of the UPC codes uh, copied to them. They needed the vendor information put in, you know, like, thanks for shopping at so-and-so, our phone number, whatever. And all that had to be programmed into each and every cash register. And she said, the thing is, is I only get paid for selling them. I don't get paid to program them. Do you want a job? And I said, yeah. So <laughs> my first paid gig was at seven years old, programming the electronic, the first electronic cash registers that were deployed in the country. That's really cool. <laughs> That's a great little story. So when people say, you know, how long have you been doing this? I'm, I tell yeah. them, and they say, you're not that old. And I'm like, uh, no, I just got started that young. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's about getting started young, exactly. It's really cool. But uh, since then, um, I, got into, um, I got into the business world and started needing computers. And when I went shopping, all I could find was uh, – 
big box stores that pretty much just wanted to throw me in something. They, I felt like I was inconveniencing them by asking them any questions, and they would point me to something and, and then walk away. Um, that didn't do it for me. I had all kinds of questions, and I really wanted to feel good about the purchase instead of feeling like I was buying an appliance. And so I went to a small store that was recommended to me, and the guy had nothing in stock and nothing I could look at, and he really didn't seem to be really up on his knowledge. And when I did get a computer there, it failed quite soon, and I ended up fixing it myself. And um, a friend of mine said, you know, um, you're in the music business now, but, you know, your your knowledge is really in the computer industry. Why don't we um, let me work toward uh, changing your business model? It, because the music industry is dying anyway. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. So we opened our store, uh, Skunkerific, which I named after my pet skunk. And... Um, we actually had a, uh, a skunk running around the store for seven years, and we named that uh, Skunkerific, and we uh, people remembered the name, which was great, and we quickly became Cincinnati's second biggest computer store. We didn't want to be the first because that was a, a big box store where you were you know, pretty much inconveniencing people by talking to them, and we didn't want to be the smallest, of course, either. That's really great. So seriously up there competing with, wow, that's amazing. And when was this? When did you get started? Right in 2002 is when we transitioned okay. into computers. Well, that's a, right tough, after that's the... a tough market to get into, uh, Dan, because by then, I, you know, you have e-machines and, and lower cost machines that people are learning to, to buy themselves online and stuff. So, yeah, to come in doing custom systems. And, and and to be successful at it, that's that's pretty amazing. Well, the industry really made it hard for me. Uh, as soon as the Internet came out, even things like CompuServe, AOL, and hmm. Prodigy and all that, the computer makers saw that as a sign to ditch human support and shove all the support online. And then they enlisted people whose primary language was in English, and as a matter of fact, didn't even speak it well enough to support, and then put them on the other end of an internet, you know, uh, uh, another another end of the internet, and the customer's like, hey, you know, uh, my computer won't get online even, and then their answer was, oh, you'll find the answer on our website, and, you know, just total lack of understanding. It, it, yeah, it's really just trying to get people to... to look in other but they're just passing the buck to get people to look in other places for their tech support because tech support is very 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 frustrating i understand i've done it myself for for businesses and and obviously as a computer builder and and specifically your point of of the building and selling of the computers is you you've made it a point to uh offer sort of disaster recovery you you, you really back the systems and things that you sell you you're, you're really good about guaranteeing for your customers right yeah the our our mottos are we actually know what we're doing and yeah. we do care that yeah that's Surprising. really important and it's it's amazing how doing just that little bit can can get you lifelong happy customers and and bring you to a, a point that you're uh, that big in the in a market like Cincinnati. That's really great. And we do all over the world, but we try sure. to maintain a personal connection. I've actually had people. I have one customer who literally drives from north of the Arctic Circle in Canada to get his computer worked on. Um, he has other people he visits, but seeing me is part of the trip. He'll buy a new computer or bring his old one and get another one. You know, he comes every few years. I've got a customer who drives from West Virginia just to get his computer worked on. And we have customers as far as Dubai, France, Spain, um, all over the world. But we really like to 
talk to the customer first because uh, one of the complaints about us is our website is horribly outdated. It is. I haven't touched it in over two years. Uh, I don't care because we want to sell you the computer over the phone. We want to say, what is it that you need? We find that customers routinely overbuy technology. Uh, right. Basically, they look at specifications, uh, unaware that the meanings of these have changed. You know, right now, the biggest processor in laptops only runs at one gigahertz, but right. it's fast. And it's very fast. It's uh, so they're running on knowledge that if it's more than six months old, as we all know, it's pretty much no good. So we like to keep up with what is going on today. Hey, what do you need? Oh, that's that's good because if people don't know technology. It's one of the things that I like to talk about on the show, and that's why I was really, really happy to, to bring you on. In particular, because we're at where we are now, you know, sort of post-apocalypse, COVID-19 and all that people are home now and all of a sudden it, it, you probably noticed this right away when the, the COVID thing started. I noticed it as a tech guy, um, technology stuff disappeared off the shelves in the retail space. It just as fast as food did. You couldn't find cameras. You couldn't find printers. Um, it, it, all that stuff just disappeared right away. It was because all of a sudden everybody's inside. Everybody needed one. Uh, everybody had to be home uh, and be able to figure out how to use Skype and all this stuff. And so there's a whole bunch of the, the world that's way behind on on understanding how they use their technology and use it well. So I'm always happy to to bring somebody on that can talk about it. And and the fact that you actually build systems and and help people understand. You know, I can I can sit here and tell them ways to to you know I try to I try to keep it simple. I say, look, this, these are the ways that you can be most secure regardless of what system that you use. Don't open stuff that you don't know where it came from. Uh, don't um, uh, 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 make sure to back up your files regularly. You know, don't browse websites that you, you don't know where – there's you know, questionable material. There's some weird things with websites that they're always trying to – figure out ways to get to your browser to automatically install some sort of software or something like that on your computer, whether you interact with it or not. And so it's kind of, it's one of those things. So it, it, there's just a, a few simple things that you can do uh, to keep yourself uh, relatively secure from the majority, you know, keep your system up to date, it, just a few basic things like that. Uh, but, but, if you actually offer these things and show people how to do them and, and, and you've proven that it works. What are some of your tools for suggesting to people their best ways to keep themselves secure when they're browsing the internet, when they're shopping online? I, I, I find people are afraid of these things because they, they, they've heard all these horror stories. Uh, you know, it's the same with the computer that they bought. They were told this, this, and this about the computer, and now they can't do this, and it doesn't do exactly that, and it doesn't seem to run this program or that game, and 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 they end up with the, the same thing when they get in uh, uh, to uh, security options and the the things that they can do and what they should use as the tools on the computer itself, you know, to to actually use it out there in the real world. Well, I want to bring up one of the one thing that is huge uh, mm. that that um, I, I see people miss a lot, and that is uh, you, you mentioned the COVID uh, thing, mm. and I think the biggest problem with with the whole COVID thing wasn't the virus. I think it was the climate of fear right. that has been created by this and. The, uh, the the virus, you know, regardless of what you believe the uh, the damage it causes, I can say that 100 percent of people are affected by this, by this climate of fear. You know, be be afraid of this. Be afraid of people. You know, stand away from them. I had a lady uh, shout at me to get away uh, from her because I wasn't wearing a mask. And, you know, and I said, uh, you know, just this is an older lady. And I, I said, uh, 
you know, is this really how you want to live your life? You know, like, just go home and wait to die then, I guess. I mean, that's, you know, don't talk to anybody, live your life on the computer, and just, you know, when when the Grim Reaper comes knocking, uh, your fear will be over. That doesn't sound like any way to live for me. Mm-hmm. And all the things you just mentioned about um, about the Internet, um, that those are fearful things. We have an operating system and a browsing system that take all that away. You said, be careful what websites you go to. We've done just the opposite. In uh, Since 2006, so 14 years, we have not only told our customers it's okay, but we've dared them <laughs> to go on any website that they want to. And, you know, go to getavirus.com, go to hackmypc.net, and, uh, you know, find a hacker and taunt him. Uh, have a good time. Our Linux system, which is, for those who are unfamiliar, is what about 82% of the Internet servers run. Remember, you never see Google go down for a reboot because their virus scanner found a virus on their system. Yeah. Um, the Linux system just doesn't care. There are so many safeguards in place to keep to keep rogue software off the computer. We tell our customers the only thing you have to do, maintenance-wise, is you see this little uh, shield down in the bottom right corner, click it, and if there are any updates, just do them. And it's literally yeah. a... You know, install and you're done. Uh, kind of like updating your cell phone. No, no different at all. Because if you're, uh, I'm sure you're aware, but many listeners may not be aware that their cell phones are also Unix-based computers. Whether it's a uh, an iPhone or an Android, the Android's a little bit closer to uh, what we offer. And, you know, if you notice that your cell phone doesn't get infected and you don't, you know, people browse uh, websites that they wouldn't browse on their computer on their phone because, you know, your phone doesn't really get viruses, neither do our computers. And we've had that guarantee out there for 14 years, and not once in history has any customer come to us and said, aha, I got a virus on my computer. That's a pretty amazing statistic. we got to go into a break. We're talking to Chuck Lee. Go to TowardAnarchy.com. It's September 6th you're looking for. I was just excited to get back into this because this is always a this short segment right here. And I didn't want to let this topic of fear go because it applies. And it's a fear of virus in reality. And it's a fear of virus in, in the digital world. And I, I just didn't want to let that go because I think it's important. And I can give this example, my own personal example, while, while we're here talking about this and I speak in terms of being safe and using your computer. And I, I, I'm not. I don't have to be because I know how to use my computer. I keep my stuff backed up. The only time I've ever been virused, I did it to myself to see what the what the reaction was. I wanted to mm-hmm. see uh, ransomware actually work and take mm-hmm. over all the files in the computer, and it was fantastic. It was neat. I just I loved what happened, and then I restored my computer and put all my files back on it, and that was that. Uh, so I can do that. Uh, before it hasn't been that long that Windows has. I'm a Windows user. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it hasn't been that long that Windows has has its own um, built-in antivirus program of any kind. It's terrible. It's terrible. And, and it's just terrible as it is. And and it's just it's just there. It is what it is. And it was not there before. And and that was my point is that I've used a Windows computer all these years, and I've never had a virus and i've never used an antivirus program it's about your your use and and knowing what you can and can't do and knowing that when you click on that one thing it's going to open a program it's going to ransom you know when i opened that i purposely downloaded it i said oh this is this new thing that everybody's talking about I, I, let's see if i can go get this and so i i backed up all my stuff and and set out to find uh, a download somewhere on a questionable website on a wares site, and uh, I found one, and it it sure enough, man, it turned every single uh, image and every single document on the computer into an image with uh, a phone number on it, and tell me to uh, send um, 
Oh, I don't. I don't even remember what it was. It's been so long ago since that I, I did it. Uh, and I said, "Oh, wow, that's really neat." And then I formatted my computer and reinstalled all my programs. And about two hours later, I was, you know, I was back to where I was before I messed with it. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, we have the ability to do that in our systems. Also, we can put the Windows operating system inside oh, yeah. of a Linux yeah. system, kind of like if you, uh, for those who are unaware you can it's kind of like you have your house you like your house it's warm and cozy but it gets moldy and and it can catch fire and if water gets in it you know it's going to damage things but you like your house but you're tired of all these problems so you move into a warehouse which is kind of the uh you know the linux is the metal steel building of operating systems and that's great but maybe you have some kind of weirdo program that you need to run under windows and you can do that with this system it's kind of like putting your your comfy little house inside of this big metal warehouse so you have a double protection and you can clone those uh, windows operating systems if you want to play on a ransomware site or something like that you can just play with the virus have fun and uh, like you said you can just go right back in time to right before with a couple clicks of the mouse that's what we call an extended feature. It doesn't just come with the system, but if you have, you know, a Windows system and you want to put it in there, you can uh, as as a secondary. We can even dual boot the computer if you need, uh, if for some reason you have some kind of uh, program that only runs under Windows that you need. I, uh, I hate you can to stop you, but unfortunately program. we got we got to go right into the top of the hour and do the top of the hour thing, but we will be right back on Toward Anarchy with Chuck Lee. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Okay, so we're off into hour number two. Go to TowardAnarchy.com and you could definitely use the words synergy in sync. Uh, there, there are some others. Uh, it's all intent. Intent is a really good one because there's just an intent to do uh, a great show and have these wonderful conversations and learn some new things and 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 to teach you know you guys are out there i i realize that and and some of these things we're absolutely doing with you in mind to, to, to catch on and uh to be able to bring chuck lee here and to talk about skunk Rific, his computer business where they uh sell repair upgrade computers and and more than that they they actually uh, really work with their customers on uh, security, and I think this is just a, a great conversation. And when I when I talk about this sort of synergy or being in sync, and there being this uh, line of intent, I'd had this meme sitting on my desktop for a couple of weeks now, long before. Chuck and I talked about this. Chuck and I, seven days we've been talking about this, and this meme has been on my deck. I guess maybe if I looked at the – I bet it would tell me. Let's see. That's one of the things these computers will do is tell you how long you had something uh, if you if you go and look at the data on it. So let's see. It's been on my desktop since the 22nd of August, so long before I met Chuck uh, and talked to him about this. And this is this this synergy, this intent to do – this this great work as it were um <laughs> the the meme up there if you go to uh, september 6th in the archive and you see that i'm talking to chuck lee there and you see the skunk horrific links uh, you'll scroll down just a little bit further you see this meme it says i don't mean to brag about it but i've survived all of these outbreaks without a single vaccine it's influenza uh, polo virus, swine flu, SARS, Ebola, AIDS, West Nile virus, H3N2, and coronavirus. Well, um, and and uh, it's just it's again it's it's synergy, it's being in sync, whatever it is, uh, the intent to do this, and and it works because we're having this conversation, and there's a fear about computers that is is need is needless. It's there, it's not based in any reality when people understand and know their computers. And then, then there might be this um, uh, fear in our real lives when it comes to these viruses and outbreaks and things that are out there to get us. And it's a little bit about control and it's a little bit about you know, keeping people from doing certain things. Don't go here. Don't do this. Don't see that. Don't browse that. Don't, you know, uh, don't download that. 
Uh, and and so it's great that it all really ties together. And I, I appreciate that Chuck has joined me to to talk about it. And it, you were just telling me that there's this is something that I don't know if everybody understands or knows, and that's that they can do um, these amazing configurations with computers now. Where and, and you've really been able to do this for a long time, but it's 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 just become so much better over the years. It's so much more stable to where you can run multiple operating systems and multiple versions of of operating systems to run old files and old programs, things that you thought that you couldn't use anymore, that you you used to love 20 years ago on that old computer of yours. (laughs) Just one more option maybe people don't realize about their technology. I get all the time people saying, hey, I got this game. It runs on Windows 98. Mm. And I really want to play this. Can that happen? And the answer is easily. Uh, we can make one of those what we call virtual machines inside of our Linux systems, and you can uh, you can play your your older games right in those, uh, no problem whatsoever. You know, something you just touched on though was um, yeah about the climate of fear and mm. um, and the, uh, the the integration of things in society. Uh, one of the things that's kind of come up new in the last few months is Bill Gates' involvement in the coronavirus scene. And as, as everybody knows, he's the founder of Microsoft. And um, that uh, the whole idea of uh, the founder of Microsoft being involved in a virus uh, kind of mm. gives me the heebie-jeebies. Mm. Uh, they're, they're definitely... Um, and in order to get a clue of somebody's intent, you can see what their work has done. You know, uh, if you have a Windows 10 operating system, you know that it's um, the updates are forced on you with no information about them. Just here's this update. Here you go. Um, there is um, uh, they give you a, a very bare bones set of uh, what they call security essentials, which do nothing. And the one thing that they don't tell you is that the biggest threat to security is the user themselves. Yes. Um, I, so I was invited to speak about security to a large church congregation, and I wanted to make a point. So I made up registration cards and very, very nice official-looking little cards. I printed them off my computer, off my printer. <laughs> Made them look real official. Put, I, I, know I where put you're the going. Uh, yeah, you do. I put the church's name on them and everything else. We passed them. I, I had then. I gave these to the person that invited me in the church. I'm like, would you pass these out, please? And then I asked the ushers to collect the cards, and they all they all brought all these cards. What I'd asked on there was their <laughs> name, their address, their phone number, um, children's ages, and uh, which school they attended. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's some pretty creepy info to give out. And um, right. so they they dutifully uh, passed the uh, the information up to uh, to the ushers who brought it back up to the uh, the person that invited me and who handed me this big stack of uh, registration forms, about five hundred of them. and And I said, uh, and I said, okay, who in the uh, in the congregation? <laughs> has lied on this one lone hand went up (laughs) and and i said with one exception every one of you in this congregation has given up your name address phone number children's ages and school they go to to a total stranger a stranger and and the lady was aghast that it invited me, and she said, she said, but you know, but or one of the people in the congregation said, uh, but but you know, you're you're a trusted person, you know, you were brought in here by the you know by so and so, and I looked at so and so, and I said, how do you know me? And she said, well, I looked you guys up in the phone book, and uh, I had you come down, you were close. And I'm like, what do you know about me? And she says, well, nothing. And I said, now, um, uh, I said, I'm going to, uh, do you guys have a shredder? Yes. Would you bring it out, please? Yes. And I want you to shred these while I continue talking about security. And the (laughs) next thing, their IT director said, 
said, uh, and this is a question I get all the time, how can I keep my kids safe online? What piece of software can I download? Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm going to be ugly here, to abdicate yeah. my job as a parent and uh-huh. give that to a piece of software that some third parties recommended. And uh, it, their IT director said, I've got something on our computer that you'll never be able to get past. And I had already picked out a um, a, a porn site that had a, a a landing page that wasn't too you know scary looking, and I within three minutes using information that any twelve year old could get on the internet uh, hit that site, and I said, "You want me to click enter?" And everybody's screaming, "No, no!" <laughs> yeah, I said, "Yeah." Uh, I said that you are the biggest threat to your own security only because you don't think. And just just stop and think, you know, um, when Google Chrome says, we want to remember all of your passwords for you, uh, you, would you you like to store your passwords with Google? Okay, that's convenient. Um, You know, that's why hackers go after big companies. Uh, people are so obsessed with their neighbors trying to get in their Wi-Fi and then <laughs> hand over hand over all their passwords to Microsoft or Google, people that you know are not your friends, and then, um, yeah, and then they give the passwords to them. That is, yeah, I see that all the time. And, 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 they, and they download special programs to, to hold all of their passwords and put all their passwords inside a locked special program. And, then they, and they do uh, very silly, silly things like use their picture to log into the, the image of their face, to log into their devices. Do you know yes. how easy it is to take a high definition image of somebody's face from a long ways away? It was proven years ago. I've told my audience this before. It was proven years ago that you could take a high resolution image of somebody's thumb and use it to access a a computer and and through those security devices that they're they're just now starting to get really popular with this like, like wiggle your eyes and your phone starts it knows that you're looking at it and things like that you guys you want to know how i keep my passwords right here in a book that yep. stays on uh, as a matter of fact we we tell each and every customer where's your password book if they don't have one i hand them one and I say, write down where, you know, the website and one one site per page. It's a little like a four by five book and write down the name of the website, write down the password and uh, about password creation, by the way, uh, people make it so hard and it is mm. really so easy for you guys creating passwords out there. The simplest and best passwords are short phrases. Yeah. All you have to do to make an, an impenetrable password is type out I, capital I, space, love, space, my, space, number two, space, dogs, exclamation mark. You now have a proper sentence. You can remember that. Easily remember that. And you, there you go. Uh, you can make it site-specific. I love my two dogs uh Facebook. Um and nobody's gonna guess that. And it's you know, it'll take six quadrillion years to to guess that password if somebody's trying to crack it, and you can easily remember it. Though the biggest enemy to passwords is the person creating it. And yeah, uh, and the kids from the Microsoft school saying, oh, make it be like capital D, Q, 1, asterisk, 5, 6, you know, whatever. And nobody remembers that, so they just constantly do the uh, I forgot my password thing. And there's no need for that whatsoever, none. Yeah, it's not that that kind of password doesn't work because that's the kind of password that I use, but I have – them written down in a book so i don't have to try to remember them and and i challenge people to do this because this is something that people don't do anymore we don't remember phone numbers so we don't remember long uh associations of names and addresses and phone numbers of people anymore and i challenge you to do this this is when i know i need to change 
one of my complicated passwords. If I remember gobbledygook of 15 characters, then it's time to change my password. (laughs) The other thing I keep seeing people calling me about is VPNs. And uh, the VPN companies are pushing, pushing, pushing Mm -hmm. to, to, uh, you know, do that. Our systems come with one, but the, uh, but what people think they're going to do is give them some extra layer of security and to make it easily understood by everybody. It's just, imagine you're going to go to, oh, let's say Walmart, you get in your car and you go to Walmart. And your neighbor can see you jump in the car and can see you go to Walmart. And the people that are down the street can watch you go by. And they see that. What a VPN would do would be you have your car in a garage and you drive in a tunnel and the tunnel exits at, well, we'll say the hardware store down the street. And then from there, you go to Walmart. Your neighbor can't see what you're doing, but anybody from that exit point to Walmart can see what you're doing. Right. <laughs> and and you, you have all the cookies on your computer that have been set by, you know, your bank, your whatever. And those are, those can easily identify you. Um, so that's uh, basically, I, I tell people the only reason I ever use a VPN myself is when I am downloading something that, uh, I wouldn't want my internet service provider to see. So if I'm downloading movies or uh, music or something like that, that's where I'll kick in the VPN. Otherwise, um, it really doesn't, it really doesn't do anything. And these guys are pushing and pushing for this. They're really fooling people into believing it. And I I try to explain this to people. it, it, it's really not about the the end to end. It's what's on the end. So when you yes. get to the end and you start moving around, that's logged somewhere. It doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't matter what you hide your tracks getting there. Uh, it's still there. And and the reality of that is is that since at least 1995, every single uh, communication system, internet service provider. Uh, cable providers, satellite provider, radio station, television station in the nation was compromised by the EAS system. There is a little electronic box in every single one of those across the nation. It listens to everything, records everything. Ultimately, in the end, it didn't start like that in 1995. But that ultimately, that it, that is the the proof. The beginning back in 1995 or so when they took the the emergency broadcast system down and installed the EAS, they literally installed the EAS. They took before the emergency broadcast system was done uh, by uh, your on honor. You you broadcast it because you heard somebody else broadcast it, and and they're your station, and it triggers you, and and you send out the government's message or that that you know that uh, centralized message. Well, it, they came along and they replaced all uh, the EBS system with the EAS system, the emergency alert system, and and they've even made changes to it over the years. But ultimately, in the end, they added a. Uh, uh, a way to take over control of the airwaves and that began the compromising of the entire system. So it, it, it and, and that's true with, with all of the communication systems at this point, they've all been compromised. So it's kind of silly to pretend that, that people are hiding their tracks when they do uh, some of the things that they do. <laughs> exactly. And when, uh, you know, and, and that's i uh, I'm sure that the people listening to this program are, not very trusting of government, but for those people nah. who are, <laughs> for those people that, that are trusting, I always say, um, uh, I, I was just a couple days ago talking to some liberals, and we were talking about control, like uh, we're just talking now. And I said, you know, uh, do you really want Trump's government to be able to control the Internet? And they thought about it for a minute, and they said, oh, and then for those who are on the other side of the fence, do you really want Obama to be able to control the Internet uh, or Clinton, for that matter? Um, it isn't about it isn't about what uh, who is behind the power grab. It's if you like them, that's great. Uh, I'm sure 
Like I said, most of the people, including us listening to this, don't you know uh, like others having power like that. But to argue with the people that do, um, when somebody says, oh, this EAS system is great, it allows us to know about tornadoes and all this stuff right away, um, yeah, uh, but at the price of somebody taking over. People were, some of my friends, uh, I have all kinds of friends, and some of my friends were cheering for Bernie Sanders. And I said, you know, I'll, yeah. I will say he's probably the most altruistic founding of all of these candidates. However, mm-hmm. once he puts his uh, programs in place, what happens to, with the next guy? What happens if another oh, right. Trump what do they over? do with it? And and the fact is, if that you go back and look at his history, he's not consistent with the things that he says he'll do today yeah, or that's tomorrow. True. They, none of well, them ever are. We gotta, we gotta go into a break here, and we'll come right back on toward anarchy. Chuck Lee has quickly become one of my favorite people on the planet. It's just a, a, another nice, refreshing conversation, and uh, he's my new friend. And we've been having this conversation about technology and specifically in security and just sort of knowing and using your stuff. And it's been really great because he, he obviously in, in my world, by my estimation, the words he's using, the things he's talking about, the proof of the existence of his, his business and the success of his business. Um, it, he knows what he's talking about and, and he's, he's living it and doing it. And that's a really great thing to me. Uh, but unfortunately, as we always do, we're running out of time on these. We didn't get a chance, Chuck, to, to talk about uh, off grid solar living at all. So maybe we'll have to have you back here uh, uh, sometime soon and, and, and maybe talk about that because uh, got, got you had mentioned it. On that. It, it, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you, you set up your own, you, you have that, the, the whole thing going on for you and you're completely off grid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just, uh, live life like normal people, but I don't have an electric bill. Very cool. Yeah. Not yeah. We definitely have to have you back and, and have the, the longer conversation about that because that's a, that's a um, boy, uh, energy independence. And there's a long conversation right there. Do we have a minute for a funny bank? Yeah, story? You can, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, over the break, I heard uh, I heard the uh, Republic Broadcast Network talk about fiat currency and banks and all mm. that. And mm-hmm. uh, make sure you go to your uh, your bank uh, your bank's website, either on your phone app or on a bookmark on your browser. But banks hire me to do what we call penetration testing to see if I can hack them, basically, and. Um, The biggest, uh, once again, it isn't the computer, it's the person. Um, The toughest bank I've gotten into, they said, you'll never get in here. We've got a surveilled garage. We've got two armed guards. We've got a uh, a locked-out elevator. There's an 850-pound magnet holding the door shut on the floor you got to get on, and everybody there will know that you don't belong. Okay. So I went in there a day before. I cased the place. I came back drove my uh, very, very uh, uh, graphic truck right up to the, in front of the security cameras, jumped out of the uh, truck with a computer under my arm, walked right up to the, uh, to the armed guards, and I said, oh, what kind of, what kind of uh, pistol do you have? Oh, I've got a SIG. I'm like, oh, man, I've just got this cheap Ruger. And I showed him my, my open carry uh, Ruger that I had on my side. And I'm like, I'm, I'm jealous of you guys. I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, we had a good time. And I said, well, where are you going? I'm like, well, I'm supposed to deliver this server to, um, you know, the, to your server room. Oh, here, we'll just let you in. So they took the key. They got me on the elevator. They said, I'm on my own past that point. I'm like, oh, no problem at all. I get up to the, uh, up to the door. Uh, I see a guy swipe a card in front of me. I walk up in my white shirt and tie. Remember, I'm a middle-aged guy, so I look like I belong. I've got a, I've got a Walgreens uh, card. It's a white card. I start swiping that. Of course, it didn't work, so somebody graciously let me in the door, walked down to the server room, and put my hand on a server, and I called the person that had hired me, and I said, uh, I- I'm in. I've got physical control of your server room right I'm now. Standing on your server right now. Yeah, yeah. And the wow. easiest bank I've ever got into was my own bank at the time. <laughs> we drove right up, and their wireless network was open, and I was I was right in just that quick. So uh, yeah, when when the bank tells you it's secure, they're 
That's about as um, yeah, that's about as reassuring as knowing that the money is real that they have. Well, and it's fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's funny too because <laughs> a lot of people are afraid to use their their uh, you know credit cards and things like that online, and 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 it just it it it's it says to me that they they have a fundamental a fundamental misunderstanding of how things work how technology works that you, your yep. credit card data is online and the most likely place to get it stolen is at the gas pump with a fake yes. reader or uh from your own bank <laughs> or from your waiter uh anybody that you yeah. hand it to yeah yeah, anybody yeah. that you would actually hand it to that could make a copy of it. Always, always take your receipt when you it, it, because there's a lot of places, especially fast food and stuff like that. And it, it, you don't understand how easy it is, even without the chips that are mandated now. How easy it is to just uh, simply swipe a card and take the data off of it just as quickly as they they ring it up for you and uh, send you on your way. So, I'm in the computer business. I pay cash for everything because I know yeah. that. I don't blame you. you can't live by you. the card. It'll come and buy no, you. I wish, I wish I would use one a little bit less than I do. But one of my problems is is that I do bank with with a big bank, but they're a big bank that didn't take TARP money. And uh, they're, they don't have a local branch. <laughs> So that's dumb. It's, it's a dumb thing on my part. We're, we're our own worst enemy. Chuck, it's been amazing talking to you. Well, I, I will uh, I'll catch up with you a little later this evening. I'll chat with you and let you know yeah. about the archive. And we'll set up something to, to have you come back again. I really appreciate it, brother. It'll be great. You take care. I'll be right back on Toward Anarchy. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. That was fantastic, as always. Just another great conversation. Chuck was, uh, I wasn't kidding when I said Chuck's one of my new favorite people. Uh, that story that he was telling about, uh, the, the, the people just giving up their information. I've, I've shared examples of that online. Uh, there were things, they stopped doing them. They were really big early on, on Facebook, relatively early on on Facebook. And on the social media in general where they would ask you questions you know it, it just it seemed innocuous but it really wasn't they're asking you sort of your mom's name and your favorite pet and your favorite color and so it's seemingly innocuous but i'm i'm sitting here watching people answer all these these questions all these little surveys and i'm like do you people not realize that these are the same questions that your bank asks you when you log in to your bank account do you not understand what what's happening when you're exposing these things? And people people just don't think they don't. It, it, it's a weird authority thing that they take other people's opinion for their safety, their security, their understanding of the world around them, their use of technology. That they, I I I'm bad enough about it. I take it for granted because of the fact that I I can and do. Uh, know and understand all of these things and so i might i might be a little bit careless myself uh, uh about it but a better better knowing and careless than not knowing at all and and trusting it all to to somebody else and and just having some basic understandings about the uh, the way some of these things are going it's pretty important i think for people to have figured this out by now we have had technology like this with us for a long time and it, it's only going to become more pervasive, more prevalent in everyone's life, especially as we're seeing now with with even though the the percentage risk of, of dying of covid is as dangerous as having a bath. I'm doing the Nixon quote things as dangerous as having a bath. That's the way some British um, uh, people who were looking at the numbers, some authorities can, can, can go look. I just I thought the quote was great. And uh, uh, <laughs> that that was there. You know, I've I've shown you some numbers before. We've talked about the COVID thing, but it, this it's not. You know, there's the slow burn, the ratcheting up. I've I've mentioned these terms before. I talked about it early on 
right when this COVID stuff came out, I even brought a ratchet in from my toolbox and and spun it around on the, on the air so you could hear the ratchet. And, and I had to slow it down because it's just spinning it was too fast. You, you wouldn't quite get it. And so I had to slow it down and, and do a few ticks. And I was making the point that this thing is a slow burn that it, and, and that it keeps ratcheting, it, ratcheting up. And we're we're on the other side. We're, we're past the halfway point of a year. So we're working on a year of dealing with this. Lockdowns, panics, rioting <laughs> that that's come up since then. It's things have changed and they're and they're changing for the worse in in some ways and they're changing for the better in a lot of other ways and it, it it it's all going to matter on how you use your energy your intent the things that you're doing and and if you're paying attention or not i don't i don't like to talk doom and gloom i don't even like to suggest it but of course it's a reality there's all sorts of realities there's a big rock going to come flying out of space either that or the galaxy the, the the uh, the galaxy that we live in will all will eventually be sucked into the black hole that's in the center of it. That's why it's a spiral galaxy, you know, because there's a black hole sucking everything in at the middle of it. And eventually, even though we're on the the far spiral arm end of of the galaxy, eventually they've even talked about it. it hasn't been that long that they talked about looking at their uh, that black hole in the center of our galaxy and knowing that it's it's active. It's you know, well, duh. <laughs> uh, this is. Eh, well, I, I don't want to get into it because what happens is then I start talking about the, some of these things that I observe about reality and that I'm that I think should be obvious. But then I also don't have the uh, the 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 technological words. I can't drop the names. I can't necessarily throw down an authority figure on. Uh, space time continuum or, or or you know necessarily at the drop of a hat and and so i could end up sounding foolish and i don't mind doing that because i try to make it clear that i'm just here having a little bit of fun and and trying to really be honest about the the world that i live in and, and the things that i'm experiencing and, and just share them with you a little bit and i i it's it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay, as especially when it doesn't matter. <laughs> when you're just pontificating and you you're just thinking about life, and and it, it's it's one of those things that I I hope you take time to be quiet. I'm I'm a tech guy. I'm a, a video game guy. I I like my movies and I like my TV and I like my input and my entertainment and I like to laugh and. Uh, I like to be distracted, but I also like to spend a bunch of time with my family and just hang out and just be quiet and not have any noise, too. And so I hope that you find your balance and I hope you have the time. If you don't, I don't think a lot of people do. I don't think they make the time to be quiet in their head. I think technology is making that even harder and harder to do. You're distracted for one thing. But then there's there's times where you're doing things like gardening or attending to the lawn, doing the laundry, hanging up the clothes, folding the clothes, doing the dishes by hand. Whereas some of these things can be in, almost entirely replaced by technology. You're not standing there for a period of time. I know I do the dishes by hand because I work on my own cars and things. It's great to do dishes by hand because it helps keep my hands clean. Otherwise, my hands would be constantly dirty, greasy because I'm always uh, jerking around with a car trying to – having to fix so – it's not even – try. it's having. I, I'm always having to do something with them because I won't – even if you buy new ones, you end up having to do stuff with them all the time unless you pay somebody else to do stuff with them all the time. But I have older vehicles because my reasons, <laughs> and not just because they're expensive, but because of the fact that there's not really – it's consumerism. I don't – there's no reason. It's I hated the, the – uh, during the Obama administration, they did this thing 
where they did the buyback and it destroyed it destroyed millions of of viable cars and forced people to get, not forced but coerced people into getting into debt to buy new vehicles that weren't necessary and it and it it took away it, after the, at that point every used vehicle became worth a thousand dollars i mean i guess if you were in the used vehicle business it was great for you uh, because there were it, it sucked up a lot of the surplus supply of used vehicles at the time that could possibly run or be used to be bought cheaply and and there's I, I don't know if anybody's ever talked about this i I've brought it up over the years such that I have in my forum so maybe you've heard me mention it before but I think it was I think it's kind of a a conspiracy thing. I think that it's, it's done on purpose, that it wasn't about boosting the economy. It's about keeping people in debt. It's about uh, pretending that that it's okay to um, – I, I, maybe there's some – it's just complete ignorance, but I can't believe that they, just to do it over and over and over again. That's broken window fallacy stuff. You know what I'm talking about? The The broken window fallacy. It's the idea that – because your window was broken by the kid throwing a rock, uh, that this is this is a good thing because it creates economic activity. It gives the glass maker a job. It gives the glass installer a job. It forces you to spend fifty bucks to buy a, a piece of glass. But here's the thing: is the fallacy is is that the fifty dollars didn't need to be spent in the first place if the window just didn't get broke. You could have spent that same fifty dollars in any other way you wanted. And that's the fallacy of it. It's used to describe war, uh, talking about war. Well, it's the same thing in this situation. And so I, I, it, it, that comes back to something that I've been on, one of these kicks that I've been on here lately and that I'm still wrestling with and working with as I continue to be exposed to people in, an, in a new world that I hadn't for a while. I shut off some contact for a while and i it, it, but it, not not in a bad way not such that i was i was i'm was trying to escape don't, don't ever get that wrong i shut down to 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 cut out the the feedback and the 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 negative input and all that and to to reflect on myself and to change who i was and to to make sure that the things that i was seeing as negative feedback in return all these that they didn't have anything to do with me and they didn't <laughs> Okay, maybe here and there, um, but they overall they didn't. They, you know, but that there were still things that I needed to work on about me and the way I communicate with people, and such that I'm doing that and I'm questioning uh, how I respond to people and trying to make sure that I don't use these these emotionally based responses that I assume people know what I'm talking about. That's why I had to explain the broken window fallacy thing. I had to make sure that you understand that in relation to what I was speaking about, because it, otherwise it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. And and it's one of these economic questions that come up a lot with people who are otherwise good people, but who don't understand how the money is fake, how the banks manipulate, how the government manipulates, how the tax is theft, that they don't just get it when you say taxation is theft. I think it's important that you be able to say more than taxation is theft. I think even in the 160 character world, and it's it's great that uh, I'm going to be able to, to continue to work with Bradley Thomas. He and I are going to uh, contribute together – combine our brains and combine our talents to work together on the show. I'll bring him back every once in a while and we'll just have some conversations and, and talk about these things uh, uh, because he he's one of these people that is, has mastered that 160 character limitation. But, but even inside that 160 character limitation, taxation is death leaves a whole lot more characters for you to fill in and make sure that you're not just giving that emotional response, that you're explaining that government is not a producer of wealth, that there is nothing government does that doesn't involve taking from somebody else. Whether you believe that that person should contribute or not is not the point. They're not voluntarily contributing. 
they're being forced and they're being forced at the barrel of a gun. And that it, not only that, it's being that it, what's being taken from them is being used to subjugate them and it's being used to subjugate others. And so we come back to where it all is and why we have the name of the show and why it all ties together and how all of these things can just be spinning around in the brain and, and still have make some point, some have some reason in a clear presentation of the idea of why I think we should head toward anarchy, why I think we need to get rid of the idea of authoritarian rule, why I think that democracy is a failure and it was always meant to be a failure because it's not, it doesn't, real people, real cooperation doesn't work by pretending to let people have a say and then stealing from them and using their own money to force them to have a say for one to even participate at all but then to contribute when maybe they don't agree 51 percent of 40 i i'd say that and the best day because there's no way the best day of democracy is one as 99 people tell one person how he can live his life because he's certainly no threat to the group. So on its best day, democracy is 51 people telling 49 people what to do. And it seems ridiculous until you live in a place that has small towns and you watch an election cycle and you literally watch a 100 person town have 51 people vote on something and 49 people vote against it. And those other 49 people have to live with those decisions. <laughs> It, it's a, it's another thing if you can opt out. That's the that's the difference in the the lie of the ruler list of the government list, the anarchist stateless society, uh, stateless society. It is if it's not voluntary, then it's it's not free market. It's not uh, it's not anarchy. It's not it's not what I believe even the founders really truly at heart envisioned when they when they thought of some idea of a free nation of people who voluntarily came together to government govern. I, I, you know, the the theft, the idea of a central authority, those things come along a little bit later. There's other there's other ideas and things that frame this nation and made this nation work before those usurpations took place before those things came along. Uh, it, it's just I, it's been a while since I've I've had to remind anybody about, you know, not not endorsing someone just because I share a tweet or an idea of theirs or not to let the show or the idea of anarchy become a, a, something of a soundbite. I haven't even said it in, in forever on the show, but it's just this idea that every second of every day we, we live in anarchy, that we affect the world around us, and we do so voluntarily with the people around us with, with countless actions and ideas and, and things that influence the world around us and make those changes in spite of the uninvited influence, opinion, the, the <laughs> murderous intent of a third party. It's just that simple. We already do it. We, all, we already do it. Towardanarchy.com, September 6th. That was the show today. We're about to jump into a break, so I have to uh, wrap this thing up and tell you about who is coming up on the show, some things that I have planned. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and you make it a beautiful thing because it would be kind of silly for me to just sit here and talk to myself doing that. I would do it. Mind you, I'm crazy, <laughs> but it's great to know that you're there and that you're participating. And we'll be right back on Toward Anarchy. Okay, I gotta remember, I'm not just sitting here listening to music in my headphones. I'm I'm live. I'm making a presentation. I'm making a case for anarchy. ToardAnarchy.com. Uh, it it was September 6th, but just look at the front page there. Whatever is up there, uh, share. <laughs> just the Toward. Uh, everybody's talking about. They am, you know, shutting down. Everybody's afraid of these October 1st changes that are coming up on social media, on, on Facebook in particular. And 
And it, you know, all of that goes away if everybody builds their own website, their own MySpace or My Facebook, whatever it is. Uh, it just and, and it doesn't have to be social. I, I think it just needs to be shared. It just needs to have the information and and, and everybody because. What's happening is that everybody is is going to decentralize anyway. That's the nature of things. Uh, people peel away from Facebook and they'll go to the float and the Mayway and and all these other places. And and I'm looking at different places and I'm always all the time because wherever there are people, I want to be. Uh, and 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 so it's natural. It's going to happen. It's going. It, people are going to go in uh, different directions. But if you if you have your own website, if you have your own blog, if you're doing your own thing and you're at your you're controlling it, I mean they can't really ever shut you up. I mean they really can't if you you do some things. I I've talked a little bit about the the crypto domain. I own the crypto domain toward anarchy, and so there's if as as browsers begin to, and they all do now, it, it, at least by extension, they will take you. They'll they'll fix that address to point it to wherever it needs to go. I can I can plug it in. The I can plug my website in. Just have it on on this little thing right here, a little USB device. It's no bigger than a quarter. I have another one that's right here that's a dime, smaller than a dime size. I can keep my entire website on one of these. I can plug it into any computer that's or device that's hooked up to the internet anywhere, and and your you can type in toward anarchy, and and your browser will take you to me, and nobody can unless they come and take me and take my little device and take the password out of my head. Steal my book, take it out of my hand, my cold dead hand. I mean, <laughs> what good? You know what is it? What's what good is it having it all then? If they killed me, if, I'm, if they shut me up already, there's no need to block me out. Uh, it would it'd be pointless, wouldn't it? So I, uh, you know, uh, you if you if you're using the technology, we talked, we had this tech talk today. If you're using it, there there are ways that you. you hey, huh, stop. My dog's going crazy over there. Uh, I guess that means it's time to go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go play with my dog and play with my family and enjoy the rest of my week. You do that, too. I'll see you next week on Toward Anarchy. I believe Dr. Keith Smith uh, with the Surgery Center of Oklahoma will be joining us. And uh, we'll see you then. Take care. You're listening to Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. Truth, truth, truth.